Hey Mark, it is evaluation day. Everybody's favorite day of the week, evaluation day. I have your 6105 here, service history unknown. Okay, well let's learn together. Okay, yeah. losing a lot of time and the amplitude is quite low. And it's got some beat air. Signal's relatively clean. And even though it's dropping like a rock, it's relatively straight while it is dropping like a rock. And the amplitude is staying steady. Okay. So we have a basic starting point. Ooh, the amplitude just dropped a bit. It's The watch has had a lot of... They lived a life, a working life. This wasn't anybody's baby possession that they polished at night and put to bed in a nice little satin line box. This was somebody's working watch and it shows it. It's definitely uh, your seal. The seal here is ancient. It's as hard as rock. The movement, uh, there's def there's a one servicing mark inside the case back. So it went in once already. Um, the winding weight is a little loose and we're starting to see some hits along here of the winding weight dragging on the bridges that's not real common i don't actually see that a whole lot where these bridges fail it doesn't happen a lot uh and it had a lot of winding too you can see this line of brassing this is the mainspring barrel so just imagine this circle continuing underneath this plate as the weight goes around and around the the paw lever magic lever which is tips of which are here go up and down and up and down and up and down and they turn this wheel which turns the ratchet wheel which turns the mainspring arbor then the arbor or the main the mainspring arbor turns the mainspring and the mainspring turns the mainspring barrel and as this turns and turns and turns and turns and turns the lower end of it sits in just a hole in the brass plate and it turns that hole it grinds that hole from being a nice round hole into being an oval and you start getting all kinds of play if you watch this screw head, see that movement? So the, I'm going to have to repair the lower end of this thing. Um, we're going to have to machine that out and put in a jewel. I mean, it's worn so worn that the whole barrel is tipping over and this edge is grinding against the underneath of the bridge. And that's a problem. Um, you can see the wear too here from, from this winding bridge. So we've got at least a couple parts that are going to have to be replaced in a fairly major repair. I mean, but the balance is there, and the movement is there, and the watch is there. It's a 6105. It's just, you know, it's always the thing, the, the balance. How much people are willing to invest in a watch. How much do they want to put into it? That was a little hazy. Um, you'd ask for direction on these things. This loom, there are some people who are like, you have to keep the original loom because it's all about the value. This stuff is called Black Death. And it doesn't get better, it only gets worse. It's already eating at the plating on the hands here. The metal on the hands here could be okay, but I don't know, it's up to you. I think it looked better if we got this loom out of here. I don't think there's any value or pride in having a watch where it was clear that the seals failed. Hacking works. And your can opinion doesn't feel terrible. It's a little loose. We're probably going to have to replace the cannon pinion or look at the center wheel. Um, direction. We clean this up. It'll look a little bit better. I could get in here with some very fine tools and get rid of a lot of these little black marks, which would certainly improve the look of the watch. I don't know that I would touch the dial loom. The hand loom, I don't know. It really depends on how much you want to invest in the watch. Uh, I would definitely... Huh, looks like that filled with epoxy or something. I'm not sure what's up there. And the loom is gone, but if we re-loom that, it'll look better. It's just a matter of how much you want to invest in it and how pretty you want it to be. Or if you like it being really worn. Um, I mean, we could even leave this handset as is. Uh, I'm not normally a fan of that because this loom, once it's this bad, tends to get worse. But it's up to you. Um, if it were my watch, I would probably clean out this handset and reloom, and the watch would definitely look better. Um, in the years to come, that could potentially hit the value, which is the one thing that people talk about. And I could, I could definitely see that as being an argument, because um, these are getting rarer and rarer and rarer. But me, I'd reloom it. But that's me. 
you have to decide how you, if you like the look of this, and if you're going to keep this forever. If you like the look at this and you're going to keep it forever, don't relume it. Just have me stabilize the, clean the handset, stabilize the underneath with a clear layer of binder that can't be seen from the front to hold it all together, clean up these markers and let it be. If you're going to keep it forever and you don't like the way it looks, let's talk relooming. If you think someday you are going to flip it and you're concerned about the value, maybe leave the loom because it might be worth more in the years to come having this original loom in there. I'm sorry, I'm not being very helpful, but you tell me. You tell me what you think is important. I just think the old back scungy loom isn't good to look at. I just think it looks like abuse to me. But that's me. You tell me what you think. Okay, let me know.